You guys might remember this place from an older video of mine, and I'm going to say one thing right now, that this place is looking hella run down, let me just say. However, there's one thing I did not show you about this place, and it's kind of secretive, I didn't show it last time because, like I said, it's a secret. But I think today is the day that I'll show you. And so, without further ado, let me show you what the secret is. I just need to find the chest I put down, I think it's over here. Let's have a look, oh, got a stick, don't need that. And there she is. Yep. I had a stone pickaxe back here for an occasion like this. I do not know why I had an occasion like this, but I just did. So, we're going to go back. Can I get this stick out of the way? We're going to go back to the mine shaft and we're going to grab something that is in here. And there was the pickaxe. Let's just go in here and see what, how this is. Ooh, this is... This is looking hella run down. Now, aside from the place being seriously run down, there is one thing in here that I'm going to have to get in order to continue for the video. And that thing is in this chest right here. As you can see, there's a bunch of stuff, like a mining helmet, there's a sword, cobwebs, but there's one thing that stands out, and that is this wrestling torch in particular. This wrestling torch right here is what I'll consider a key to something, so let's just go back outside and I'll show you what that is. It actually is getting kind of dark, so let me just wait for darkness to fall upon us, because it'll make what I'm going to show you a lot better. Right, now it's dark out, let me show you guys what this key is linking to. I'm not going to see what it is, I'll just show you guys because I think you'll like it. But I didn't see that coming. This contraption here I've had for a while, actually, did I? I can't even remember where I built it. But it's here nonetheless, and right through the end of it is, well, today's video. We're going to be talking about five more simple Minecraft traps you can build in your own survival worlds. Also guys, if you're going to enjoy this video today, then why don't I hit the subscribe button down below and turn notifications by hitting that little bell icon once you subscribe to the channel. Plus, as well as doing Minecraft stuff, I do Splatoon and Smash Brothers. So, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, then why not subscribe and turn notifications by hitting that little bell icon once you subscribe. But anyways, let's get into the traps that I have to show you. This first trap is pretty simple. All you need to have is a lectern and a book. You take your book, you put it down on your lectern, and simply depending on how many pages you have, you'll have a fun time on how you're reading it. Because, as you can see right here, we have a book that says, please, don't, no, okay, that's weird, isn't it? Oh, that was weird. A piece of teen, yeah, a piece of teen tea, what, whatever. You know what I mean, a piece of teen tea went off behind it, and that is really weird. So, how's about we see how it was built? To build this trap, you're gonna have almost any space, really. All you need to have is a lectern and a comparator. You need those simple things, and a bit of redstone as well. How you build it is you have a lectern to start off with, a block behind it to conceal the size of the wall. You need a comparator to come out the back of that, and then you should probably do this beforehand, but you should take your book that you have, we'll just use the example book that I had before, and you should put it to the last page of the book. As you can see here, we get a signal strength, and depending on how far you put it, the signal strength will vary. So if it is at one, it'll only give one signal strength worth. However, if it's two, it'll give you, was it five? If it's three, it will bring it all the way up to the end of here. And in the output, you can do whatever you want. You can have a piston, you can have a lamp, or like I used in the example, TNT. Let's give it that quickly. Yep, bye. And that is how you build the evil lectern, as I would call it. Pretty simple and really effective to show your friends. This next trap depends on your friend's intelligence. They come into your house and they find this nice little small shack. You've got a furnace, a nice flower pot, and a, a marble painting of a creeper. And they notice that next to your chest, where it has stuff in it perhaps, is a death pit. And they're like, nope, I do not want to fall into that. That is deadly. But the curiosity gets to them and they decide to have a look inside your chest. Nothing really happens, but they notice that you have a diamond in your chest. Or anything really, this is just, this is just an example. They decide, oh, wow, they're not home, so I might as well take said diamond. They do so, and then all of a sudden, oh god, yep. You get bombarded with arrows and they died in lava or something like that. So let's see how the trap was made. This trap's pretty simple to build. All you need to do is have a chest next to a long pit or something like that, or anything really. And what you want to do is next to the chest where the wall is, you need to punch out two blocks and replace those blocks with signs. You then want to take a painting of some sorts and replace or just cover up with a painting of some sorts. We'll use this as an example. The next thing you want to do is come in the back of the chest and place a comparator. On front of that comparator, you want to put a piece of resin dust and then a repeater. Now, I recommend before you continue to build a system from here, you want to put an item in your chest so that when you do build a system, 
the dispensers will not activate and the pistons will already be pushed up where the blocks will be so that everything's in place. The next thing you want to do is take a redstone line from here and bring it all the way to the end right here. Right here, next to these two blocks, you want to remove these two and replace them with sticky pistons facing upwards. Then you want to take some oak planks or whatever your wall is made out of and put them right next to it. Honestly, the block doesn't matter, but I recommend using the same block as your wall because it'll look neater. The next thing I want to do is come over here and place a piece of redstone dust with a block on top of it. Any block will do, it doesn't have to be quartz. Then you put a block to the side and put a resin torch on top. Then you want to build this kind of formation of blocks all the way to the end. Then you want to take another comparator and put another one down. Make sure you right click this one because you're going to have this on a loop. Then you want to put a resin line around the side of this comparator and put two blocks above these two pieces of redstone so that the current does not um, power up with this piece. Then you want to take a piece of redstone, or take a resin line I should say, and bring it right to the end, build up two blocks right here, and finally you want to take your dispensers and place them facing towards the blocks that are powered up by the pistons, like so, and fill them up with arrows so that they can be fired out. And so, once the player comes over and takes your items, the dispensers will start firing and the pistons will retract, and they'll stop once you put the item back on, or any item, back into the um, chest. A simple but pretty cool trap, however, like I said, it is kind of situational and if your friend's smart enough they might not fall for it, but if your friend's new to Minecraft or if they're just not expecting it from you, then this is the kind of trap for you. This next trap involves the new target blocks that were given in I believe 1.15? Maybe 1.14. I can't remember if it's 1.14 or 1.15, but it involves the new target blocks. You're going to tell your friend to take a bow and arrow of any kind. They're going to stand on this red block of any sorts, just a block, but red is particularly better and you've got to shoot the target. If they miss, then they lose. But if they win, say they win, I don't know, 10 iron, or 10 diamonds, we'll say. So they pull out the bow, they fire, they shoot the target, they hit, and oh, then they go through the floor into the void. Quite a simple trap, and it's quite cool. It's so unique. Now you can set up your target range in any way, but personally, I like this kind of idea where you have a nice little starting area with some sort of standpoint to stand on, and your target sitting at the end, either integrated into the wall, or just sitting out on some sort of stool, like this. From here, you want to take a comparator and place it right out of the back of the block. Probably, you can do it with a block in front of it or not, but this bear because it can serve as resources. Then, you want to take a, another block and run that out the back of it, and then place a bit of resin dust underneath that. From there, you want to go underneath the actual thing, take out this block right here, and replace it with, I'll break this a little bit, a repeater. From here, you want to go below this block where the repeaters run into and place a piece of resin dust right there. From there, you want to take a resin torch and place it right here and then connect the line up to wherever your station is. And from here, this is where the piston trap is going to be. Assuming this right here is the hole where the red blocks are going to be, you want to take four pistons and place them right here, next to the, or one block away I should say, from the hole. Then you want to take two other pistons, like so, and place them upwards. These will connect to the actual um, blocks that will pull them down. Let's set the day quickly because it's going to get dark. Then you want to take some resin lines and run them round to the sides like this. Then you want to take some blocks and place them right here. Put more resin dust on top of that and then run repeaters into them. This will push these ones over and it will connect them up. Be sure that I put these on three ticks each because you need to have a bit of delay for these ones to retract first, then these ones. Speaking of retracting, you need to have two more repeaters over here so that they can extend these pistons. And once you've done that, you're pretty much done. So once your opponent takes a bow and arrow, we'll say, so we'll just get a bow for myself because I'm in creative mode. Crossbows work as well, but you can do a bow and arrow. And when you fire at the target, it'll pull back the piston and it will just put you right into the void. The best thing about it is that once you've been pulled into the void, it will immediately reset because once you, with target systems, it only does like a one tick system. This one right here is pretty much my favourite because of how like how unique it is in its design. You have a starting place for this person to stand, you take a bow and arrow, you shoot, you fire and then you fall into the void, wherever, um, or wherever trap you're in, whether it's lava or like I said, death pit, whatever. It's pretty cool and I like it, it's pretty much my favourite. This next step is simple on design, but it's actually kind of interesting how it works in terms of how the system is made. This little house here, this little like, mushroom house from Mario, is simple to make. Inside you've got a button that you cannot reach until you get into the actual house as you can see. 
and like I just said, you can't really tell nothing's wrong. So once you get into the room, you can re reach it. So what do you do? You hit the button and you realize that, oh, TNT, you can't get out and you're, well, done for. Probably didn't die there. Don't know how, but probably because of some sort of broken reason. I don't know. You're supposed to die there, but I died anyways. <laughs> Building the first part is pretty simple. All you gotta do is take this block out from below the block where the button is on and place a bit of resin there. Then below this block that's next to the dust, you want to put a redstone repeater run into this block. And then below that block, you want to take a bit of resin dust and place it underneath here. Then go into the block that is going to be the block that will block your piston, or sorry, block the player from getting out. You wanna take a redstone line, go into the piston that you're going to use. So in this case, it's right here. Then once you reach the block that you're going to be pushing up, you place a piston where the block's going to be, and finally, you replace the block. And so when the button's pressed, the block will be pushed up, but not retracted. So the player cannot get out whatsoever. The second part is a lot more difficult, but it's not that bad, so keep up with me. You want to take a piston and place it right next to this block. Then you want to take a wrestling line and run it into a block right here, and place a bit of dust on top of that. Then, or actually, sorry, you want to place a repeater here, and then you want to place a bit of resin dust on top of here. Then you want to take that resin line and run it out on top of the system and place, a but and place a bit of resin up here. That way, once the button's pushed, the block will shift it away and immediately destroy the bottom of the button. Next, you want to take the resin line and bring it up to here where the dispenser is going to go. And then you want to put a repeater with two ticks on it with the repeat, not the repeater, the dispenser right in front of it. This is going to be your dropping zone, where the TNT will come out of. And I believe with that last part, you are done. So once you have filled the dispenser up with TNT, you just need to wait for someone to come by, press the button, and the moment they realize that they'll trap themselves, they're pretty much done for. Hey guys, this is Edited Moth. When I said that you should be done by then, I should recommend that you place a blog above and where the dispenser is. That way, it'll just go right through the block and down to the opponent. If you don't get what I mean, here's an example of what I mean. A simple but deadly trap. I like it a lot, and personally, it may not be the best one, and it may be more on the advanced side, but hey, it's a trap nonetheless, so you guys can go on and build it if you want, in your worlds. Now this last trap will probably have many combinations that you can do with in terms of what redstone you want to use with it, but I'm going to show what I think are the best two that you can probably do. The first one out of two is where you have a dispenser underneath the door that you have, and when you step on the pressure plate, it will fire a potion of your choice, whether it be harming, poison, invisibility, etc. The second one being a more brutal one, but in this case, it can be something that's a bit more deadly. I'll let the trap explain for itself. The first of the two traps is fairly simple, it's actually pretty much self-explanatory. First thing being is you want to take the door and you want to make it so that the pressure plate will not activate it, as shown here. So the first thing I'll do is take the, out the door and place it on the inside. Next you want to take a lever and place it anywhere on the back of the door, but preferably I like doing it above it, but any side works. And then let it shut itself over. Although make sure whatever side the door is on, you have the um, outside the door sticking to whatever side, like that. So now, once I walk over the pressure plate, nothing happens because it's already been powered up from the back. Once you've got that done, the next thing I'll do is take a dispenser and go directly below the pressure plate and just place it down, facing directly up towards the pressure plate, like so, so that the dispenser is facing up into the pressure plate. Then you want to take a potion of your choice and fill the whole thing to the brim with said potion. I'm using instant damage too as the example. Then you want to just patch up the floor and you should be good. So when a player walks by, if I go into game mode zero and then try to go through the door, I shall take damage and if I take too much, I'll die. Pretty cool, pretty simple. It's a nice little trap and it's not the one that will kill, but if they keep going over it, then they will die. Now for the second idea of the two, this one will only work if your friend slash, I don't know who you're doing it on, but it will only work if you have an over arch like this that's two blocks high and it's got a segment on each side so that there's a space. Stuff like that, or it could just be like this, but preferably something like that is better. And so what you gotta do is the same thing as before, you wanna take the iron door that you have as your, what's my call it, as your door, and you just wanna place a door that will shut itself over like this, and once you activate the other side, it will never open again until you activate that lever. Then, once you got that out of the way, next thing you gotta do is destroy the floor, or just go below it in general, 
and instead of doing an Eddie Spencer like last time, you want to go down below it, um, the brush plate, and place a piece of resin dust. Then you want to go around the sides of the dust and place pistons facing up like so. And all you got to do is place blocks on top of it like so, so when your friend or anyone walks into it, it's a simple trap and they'll get caught and they won't get out. Even if you're flying, you won't get out. Now, if you want to have a bit of fun with this and make a friend or player or whatever it is go up in a bang, then you want to go around the back again underneath it and do this sort of pattern right here and place another piece of resin dust like so with a repeater run into the block right here. Then on top of that block you want to place a resin torch, then you want to go onto the next block, um, keep that block there and destroy the block above it and place another resin torch. Oh yeah, I should say this right now, you don't want to have the lever on the top, you want should you should have the lever on the side, preferably on the side that doesn't have the, um, what's it called, dispenser, because if you have your dispenser set up like this, um, it will not activate, so preferably have it on the side that the dispenser is not on. Anyways, once you've got that done, it should be complete. All you've got to do is take a bit of TNT, like so, and do the following. I'm going to grab a water bucket just so it doesn't destroy the actual contraption, but you'll see the idea. And then I walk into the trap like so, the TNT will appear, and obviously I'm using the water to keep myself alive, but you'll see that it'll blow up. And even at that point, I'm kind of trapped, so yeah. Jokes on me. But anyways guys, that's gonna do it for today's video on 5 more simple Minecraft traps. If you liked it then why not hit the subscribe button down below and turn notifications by hitting that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. And if you forgot, um, like I said at the start of the video, I also do Splatoon and Smash Bros. So if you like that kind of content then why not subscribe and stay up to date with my videos. But anyways guys, thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye.